special good morning to each and every one of you, to Principal Brown and the members of staff of the St. George Secondary School, the students of the school, especially invited guests and friends. It's a pleasure to greet you this morning as we share the word of the Lord with you. Aren't you happy that you're in church this morning? Amen. Uh, and students of the school, before I share the word of the Lord with you, I just wanted to, just to tell you, uh, usually I would say to you that you should try as much as possible to emulate your principal. But, but he is so bad behaved that I say to you this morning, please don't try to be like him. Is that okay? But this morning, church, those of you who are in-house, as well as those of you who are, who are online, I want to share with you this morning on the theme, the woman who gave her all. The woman who gave her all. And as a text this morning, we're looking at St. Mark's Gospel at chapter 12. And we're going to read from verse 41 to verse 44. St. Mark chapter 12 verse 41 to verse 44. And incidentally, especially to those of you who are visitors, my name is Hal, and as you heard earlier, I'm one of the assistant pastors here at the Ellerton Wesleyan Holiness Church. I'm reading from the message version of the Bible this morning. So Mark chapter 12 and verse 41, it says, sitting across from the offering box, and it's talking about Jesus, it says, he was observing how the crowd tossed money into the collection. Many of the rich were making large contributions. But verse 42 says, one poor widow came. She came up and she put in two small coins, a measly Two cents. Verse 43 says that Jesus called his disciples back into them and he called them. He called them over and he said, The truth is, this poor widow gave more to the collection than all the others put together. Are you hearing the word of the Lord this morning, church? Verse 44 concludes that he said to his disciples further, all the others give what they'll never miss. She gave extravagantly what she couldn't afford. She gave her all. She gave her all. Church, this morning Jesus is in the church as he was on this occasion. And when he came into the temple, he didn't come and take the most prominent seat in the house like Mr. Brown. But he came up and he sat close to where the receptacles were, where people were coming to the temple courts, and they were going to deposit their, their, their offerings in the receptacles. And he came and he sat close to the receptacles, and he sat there very casually, very matter-of-factly, but he paid significant attention to what each person deposited in the receptacles. And up comes what the scripture des describes as a poor widow. And every time I read this portion of the scripture, I always have an image in my mind. The, the Bible doesn't reference her age or what she looked like, but, but somehow every time I read this, I have an image of my mind of an elderly lady being, being not so well dressed, ambling up the aisle with a, with a fierce determination to also deposit what she could afford into the offering basket. The scripture confirms to us that 
many individuals who were better off than she was also came and gave into the collection. And as a matter of fact, in the context in which Jesus called his disciples and made his observation, in the midst of him being in the temple, first of all, he had chased the money changers out of the temple, and then he had some harsh words for the scribes and the Pharisees because they operated in the, on the basis that all that they did in the house of the Lord was done to receive recognition by other human beings. So he said to them that, that they like to take the prominent place in the house. We can extrapolate as well that they love to, to come up when they came to the offering basket and, and throw in some gold coins into, into, the, into the receptacle. And you can only imagine in those days when, when, you, when you threw a gold coin into the receptacle, imagine the noise that that weighty gold coin made as it, as it settled into the basket. But the scripture tells us that there came a poor widow. And that's a double indictment against this poor lady. Because not only was she a widow, but the scripture qualifies her widowhood by the fact that she was poor. Church and friends, we're talking about a period of time when there was no ministry of elder care present in the context of the scripture. There were no social services available. Her husband had died. We, we don't know if she had any children, but, but we may be able to extrapolate that perhaps given her, her state of poverty, that perhaps she may have been childless as well. But she could not be denied her opportunity to return thanks to the God she served. As all the others did, she too came to worship God with her offering. I have a picture of this poor widow that she was not daunted by the eyes staring at her as she came up the pew in the church to deposit her gift. Maybe some of the people looking on wondered, oh, what could she be bringing to put into the offering plate today? She doesn't have anything to offer. Maybe some of them didn't even spend a, a moment to acknowledge her presence in the house of the Lord. But she was not discouraged, church, by the condescending or the scornful looks of, of this day that may have, may have come her way. She had simply her own contribution to make. And Principal Brown, I'm so thankful this morning for the three children from your school who came up this morning to read those portions of scripture and to sing for us here at the Elliton West, the Holiness Church. Because when I think about this poor widow, I think about individuals in our society who may sometimes be overlooked, who may sometimes be ostracized, who may not have all the, all the tremendous talents and abilities that, that some of us are endowed with, but they can still come in front of all of you this morning and render that thing with a sense of courage and a sense of conviction that goes way beyond their capacity to do so. So I think they deserve a an additional round of applause today. But when we talk about this woman who gave her all, it's important to note a couple of things about her contribution. I want to say to you this morning, church, that her contribution was significant. It was significant. 
Her contribution in the context of the scripture may have been numerically inferior, but proportionately, 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 it was far more significant as a proportion of what she could afford than everyone else who gave that morning. Jesus told his disciples that many of the people who gave, they, they, they only gave a little bit of what they had. In other words, the sum of what they gave numerically may have been greater, but they had so much left in reserve that they could still live comfortably. Are you with me, church? But proportionately, this poor widow, all she had left were two saints. Uh, some so measly that in, in our context today, we don't even trade in saints anymore. A couple of years ago, we decided that, that saints were so meaningless in terms of being able to purchase anything that we decided we were, we were doing away with saints. And I see so many pieces knocking around on the streets nowadays that perhaps maybe so we may do with the five cent piece as well. But that's all she had. That's all she had. A fraction of a pence in the context of the scripture. But that's what she came to give to her God. But not only was her contribution significant, but her contribution was also noteworthy. Her contribution was also noteworthy. Jesus is in the church. He sits at the front right by the offering plate and he observes what each person puts in. And after this old widow, this poor widow comes and deposits her contribution, Jesus is so, it's so significant to Jesus that he calls his disciples and he uses it as a teaching moment to say something very, very profound to them. And on the balance of time I have available this morning, there are just two lessons I want to share with you this morning. And I want to say to you, church, that if we relegate this teaching, this message to just talk about money, I believe you will miss the point of the significant lesson God wants us to take away from this portion of scripture. But I believe that the Spirit of the Lord wants to say something very significant to us as a church today and to you as well as a school. Those of you who are here representing the St. George Secondary School. The first thing I believe God wants you to know this morning, church, is that God honors your sacrifice. God honors your sacrifice. It's okay, Brother Andre, if I may pick on you this morning. <laughs> it's okay if we can render to God out of the abundance of the, the gifts and abilities that God has blessed us with. When Brother Andre plays the, the keyboard and he sings, uh, sometimes I, I believe that, that he may only give us a fraction of his vast ability. But when people like me come to preach to you, this is all I can do. This is all I can give. I'm not a good speaker. I have a list, my wife likes to tell me. But seriously speaking, whenever we come to the house of the Lord and we're able to give to God not, not out of the abundance of what we had, but when we're able to give to God sacrificially, when, when, when we're daunted by the, by the audience at hand and, and those butterflies begin to, to rise up in our tummies, but we say, you know, that the pastor asked me to do a task, the principal asked me to do something, I will not be daunted. God, God honors that sacrifice, church. In heaven's arithmetic, 
a labor of love is always applauded by God. And those of you who are teachers, educators in the house, I, I want to remind you that you may not be in the most lucrative career possible. I dare say you may not be in the most prestigious career, Principal Brown. Sometimes it seems as though it's a thankless job. Especially when you listen to programs like Brass Stats. Where some people have so many lashes for teachers. Sometimes, Brother Dawson, being, a, being an officer of the law, it seems as though it's a thankless job. One mistake is made and, and you hear everybody painted with the same brush. Sometimes as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ or even sometimes as Christians. The world has so many negative things to say about us, church. But I want to remind you, those of you who are part of the educational fraternity, that every investment you make in our nation's children is an investment in the future of this country. And you may not, you may not see as you are working and as you are investing, as you are making sacrifices, you may not see adequate compensation for what you are doing. But I want to remind you this morning that heaven, God in heaven, is taking note of your contribution. Amen. God is taking note. And church, we're reminded that there's a scripture that tells us that the God who sees in secret. Am I talking to a church this morning? The God who sees in secret will reward openly. God will honor your sacrifice, church. But secondly, secondly, and I believe more importantly, when we consider this woman who gave for all, I believe God by the by his Spirit is saying to us this morning that every single one of us has value, value in the eyes of God. And that pause was for the amen. But every one of us has value in the eyes of God. Imagine that Jesus called his disciples to him and he taught them this lesson. He reminded them that many came and gave out of their wealth. It tells me that there were many well-to-do people, affluent people who came into the temple or who came into the church on this occasion and deposited their gifts. I believe in, in a worldly sense that if this, was a, a worldly, if this was a worldly context, Jesus may have taken the time to highlight the person who gave the most. Because we live in a world where those who excel and those who, 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 who have positions of power and authority often get the highest recognition. But, but in the economy of heaven, church, God doesn't operate like we do in the world. But God sees the little child. There was a time in Scripture when some parents brought their children to Jesus, and Jesus says, disciples, those apostles of Jesus, when they saw the parents bring the children, they said, they tried to stop them, and they said, no, 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 you can't, you can't disturb the great master. The scripture tells us that Jesus got angry with his disciples, Principal Brown, and he said, don't stop them. I want the children to come to me. And the scripture says that he took them in his arms, and he blessed them. 
I heard Principal Brown saying this morning that based on the allocation system nationally, he may not get all the high-flying students at the St. George Secondary. But can I remind you this morning that even the students that, that Principal Brown gets at the St. George Secondary, in the eyes of Almighty God, they are of tremendous worth as they come. This poor widow, someone who will be overlooked, not, not, not a person of, of, of high value, of high significance, not a person, it seems, who, who would have been well-educated, but God took the time. Jesus Christ took the time to acknowledge and to highlight her as, as a moment to teach his disciples and as a moment to teach us that all of us, church, have value in the eyes of God. I'm so thankful for that this morning. Because I came into church big. I came into church as a, as a man. Uh, and if I, if I were to, be, to, to, to have to come into church in the context of, of, what, of what the world, how the world operates, I don't believe I would have this opportunity to be here serving in, in this church as, as, as a pastor because I would have had to, to wait my turn and to, and to wait on those who were more prominent and who would have been in church longer than I was. But, but God does not operate like that church. Glory to God. God sees the sacrifice of a broken heart and he honors those sacrifices. God sees value. In each of us. And he honors us not for what the world sees, but for what he sees. The great apostle Paul in the book of Romans at chapter 2 and verse 11, he made a very profound statement there when he said that for there is no partiality with God. There's no partiality with God. It means that God doesn't look down on earth and, and, and see the, the president of Barbados and he sees gearbox and he values the president more than gearbox. God doesn't operate like that. God doesn't operate like that. But I'm convinced that God treats each of us fairly, church. And I want to remind us that we too need to treat, treat each other fairly as well. We need to treat each other fairly as well. And I want to encourage us that because God sees value in each of us, our, our, our past may be shameful when we think about it. Our present circumstances, like this widow, may not necessarily be so rosy. But I want to tell you this morning that because God sees value in you, though your past may be shameful and your present may not be so rosy, if you would make a commitment to Almighty God, your future can be bright. Because the God who we serve, the God who this poor widow served, she recognized that, that if she could only give back something to God. It was, it, was, it was a sign of her worship, church. It was a sign of her faith. It was a sign of the commitment that she had for the God that she served. Her very last two cents, after she put those two cents in the offering basket, she had nothing left. The scripture doesn't tell us what her outcome was, but I'm convinced that because Jesus Christ took note of it, that her outcome was a good one. Praise God. And church, our outcomes as well, Brother Jason, can be good 
when we commit all that we have. All that we have. Not, not reserving anything, but we commit all that we have to this God who gives back to us so lavishly, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I should stand with me this morning as we ask God's blessings on his word. The woman who gave for all. And I want to take this opportunity, the context of this service in the remaining time I have available to me. That is, if there's anyone here present this morning who, who has never said yes to God in their lives, who, who has never made a commitment to Almighty God. And you're here this morning, you're here physically in-house, or you're online, you want to say, you want to take a moment this morning to just raise your hand in the air and to make a commitment to God. And you, 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 you want to have the courage like this poor widow in the presence of all these people, just to slip your hand in the air and say, I want to receive Jesus Christ in my life because I've never done so yet. I want to be able to see that hand and to acknowledge that hand and to pray with you this morning, very specially. Thank you, Jason. Is there anyone else who will say yes to God this morning? Like this poor widow, I want to go all in for God. Father, thank you so much for our young brother, Lord, who raised his hand again once more to acknowledge his commitment to you, Lord. Father, you saw his raised hand, Lord. Perhaps there's some on the online platform on YouTube who may have put that red sign emoji in the chat. Lord, we're unable to see it at this moment, Lord. But we pray for that individual as well. We pray for that commitment made, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will honor that commitment. And that individual as well will honor that commitment to you. Serve you. To walk in obedience to you. And to be a child of God. Father, thank you so much for your word today, Lord. The woman who gave her all. We pray, Lord, that we will not take this story lightly, but we will treat it with a degree of profound seriousness. And we too would see and follow the example of this poor widow that as little as we have, if we give it all to you, you will honor our sacrifice. That's your people today, we pray. Seal this word to their hearts, Lord, and to their spirits. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen.